back into Fern Rabin Soul, welcome back to our channel. In today's video I am doing a bit of a introduction to SPF and also demonstrating and reviewing the five new SPFs from Dr. Curacle. So Dr. Curacle kindly sent me these five sun creams. Um, the first one which is their Seeker sun cream which was very popular and they reformulated for those of you that don't know, there was a little bit of a scandal in 2020 where a few brands had SPFs um, recalled because they didn't meet the SPF um, specification as stipulated. So one of those was Dr. Curacle. Um, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail throughout this video because obviously testing um, with SPFs is quite difficult. Um, but yeah, I thought this is probably the one that most people are interested in, probably followed by their new Hyaluron one and also the Kombucha BB, um, which also contains SPF. Um, all of these have been tested in both Korean in vivo tests and also in European labs as well. They've kind of shown me the certification and um, I've spoken to great lengths with them around the testing of these SPFs. So I thought what I would do in this video is demonstrate these in case any of you are interested in how they look and how they are in general. Let us know if we should curate some more sun creams, um, especially this one. I'm super excited to always try some new sun creams and you know, a little bit of a hint, these ones are excellent. And there's a good range as well. So a lot of them cover all skin types. For those of you that don't know, I'm currently studying um, for my diploma in cosmetic science formulation. So actually one of the last modules that I'm studying at the moment is around SPF formulation. So I thought what better time to talk about it. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so a little bit of uh, an introduction. So there are three different UV ultraviolet wavelengths when we talk about um, UV and sun cream. There's UVA, UVB and UVC. UVC doesn't enter the Earth's atmosphere, so we're not really concerned about that one when we are formulating sun creams. It's mainly UVA, which penetrates glass, and UVB, which can penetrate the skin, which are the ones that we want to be protecting ourselves against. Now, when it comes to how you burn or how quickly you burn, um, there's probably two main factors to that. The first is your natural skin type. Um, so for example, I've got a slightly darker um, skin type, which means I have a higher degree of melanin in my skin compared to say, for example, my husband, he's Welsh, he's pale, he gets sunburned very easily. Um, so that is gonna be a factor. And the second is the intensity of the light that you are exposed to. And this can be dependent on a whole host of different factors. So at what time of day, seasons, how cloudy it is, whether you're indoors, outdoors, are you near a window, are you not, are you covered, are you wearing a hat, the hours of the day. Um, so yeah, as you can see, there's a whole host of factors that can dictate how quickly you burn. Um, third of all, I want to caveat with the fact that there's very different perceptions as to when you should use sun cream. I think, for example, if you think about Europeans, it's you wear it on summer holiday when you're baking and sun tanning on the beach, whereas in Asia, a lot of people will wear it as its intended purpose, protection measure, they'll apply it in the morning as part of their routine and they will reapply it throughout the day. They will also make sure that they avoid the sun when it's at its harshest between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. and they will also ensure that they also cover up with say um, a hat etc. So when it comes to testing SPF there's obviously a lot of discrepancies and external factors that can potentially skew results. So for example, when we test on Asian skin or European skin, um, time of the day, seasons, etc., cetera, um, how exposed to sunlight are you, whether it was tested in access to sunlight, all of these can play a role. So it is quite a difficult thing to navigate. Um, I'll come back into that a little bit later because there was quite a few questions on Instagram around SPF in general. 
um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of caveat that, um, those few points. The next point I want to make is around the three different SPFs that are available in terms of their filters. So we have mechanic, uh, we've got physical, chemical, and also hybrid filters. So physical sun cream, so for example, this 5 Alpha Control No Sebum one from Dr. Curacle uses physical filters. Physical filters are going to be ingredients such as talc or kaolon or mica um, if you look at the ingredients list. But essentially what these will do is these will, uh, I guess, reflect uh, and scatter UV light. So act as a physical shield to UV rays. Um, they tend to leave a little bit of a white cast, although formulations have become so much more sophisticated these days that they've actually been really good in um, making sure that the size of the particles are smaller and therefore minimize um, that white cast as well. They sometimes can feel a little bit chalky. So if you think about talc, um, they can feel a little bit drying and talky on the skin. Um, so this is really much of a preference thing. I know a lot of parents opt to use um, like sunblock or a physical uh, sun cream on their children um, because it is typically deemed as safer. Um, and as well, if you're pregnant, then you will probably be advised to use a physical sun cream. In terms of chemical sun creams, these use chemical filters. Um, so these are going to be um, ingredients such as homosale or um, ethylhexyl salicylate, I think is another one that's commonly used in sun creams. And with chemical SPFs, they're going to absorb the UV light. So physical, chemical, and then you've also got hybrid sun creams, which basically combine filters from both chemical and physical um, sources. So when UV rays enter the skin, they cause free radicals, which are damaging to the skin. A lot of sun creams will also include co-ingredients in their formulations, um, specifically antioxidants, which are known as free radical scavengers. They will basically eat up all of those nasty free radicals and so therefore, you know, work hand in hand um, with the chemical or physical um, filters in your SPF. So ingredients like uh, vitamin E, tocopherol, um, a lot of sun creams usually have these co-ingredients in them just to enhance the benefits of a sun cream. So why do we need sun cream? Really to kind of minimize the damage to the skin. Um, a lot of people think it's only to reduce the risk of skin cancer. And I mean, I think that's a pretty big reason to use sun cream in general. Um, but I feel from a personal standpoint, the benefits of using an SPF daily for me have been evening out my skin tone, reducing the amount of hyperpigmentation and also alleviating redness. So therefore it will give you a much brighter and even complexion as well. Okay, so the first one I'm going to talk about is the Dr. Curacle Sika Regan Vegan Sun. If you see me looking to the right of the camera, it's because I have an iPad with all of the notes that Dr. Curacle sent alongside these SPF. So I will keep referring them throughout the video, um, just in case you're wondering. So this one is the main ingredient, obviously Centella Asiatica, really good at reducing inflammation and redness and a really great ingredient for those that suffer from acne. This one absorbs really nicely into the skin. It's their reformulated version of their previous one, which was obviously very popular. Um, and it uses chemical filters. So this is a chemical SPF. It also includes kiwi extract, which is a really good ingredient at protecting the skin from any environmental aggressors, such as dust, fine particles, etc. So if I would say this is probably more suited to combination, potentially dry skin types, but this would be a really good one if you have sensitive skin, if you suffer from redness, um, or if you have acne prone skin as well. So I think this is probably going to be um, their most popular ones. Centella Asiatica is also a really well loved ingredient for good reason as well. Um, so yes, this is also SPF 50. I should just add um, all of these, I think are SPF 50 
which, oh no, apart from the BB, which I'll talk about last because I don't really kind of classify in the same um, group or genre as the other sun creams. The rest of them are SPF 50 because I think that is now becoming the standard in terms of the level of factor that you should be looking at. I think at a minimum you should be looking at SPF 30, um, but from personal experience I just prefer a higher SPF of 50. Okay, the second SPF I'm going to talk about is the Hara Youth Moist Sun. This is also SPF 50. Um, really like this one. I would probably say out of the five that I tried, um, speaking of the sun, it's like going straight into my eyes. Um, I'm trying to get good light because it's getting a little bit later and I'm trying to film, but yeah, the sun's a little bit in my eyes now. It kind of heard us talking about it. So this is probably my favorite one um, as well as this one. This one is really great if you have dry skin. It's more of a essence like texture. Um, but this one contains a whopping 10 different hyaluronic acids, which is a really great ingredient at retaining moisture in the skin. So if like me, you have dry skin, you probably will want to opt for this one um, out of all of them. It kind of looks lightweight and like a gel texture when you apply it, um, but it is more like a kind of essence serum texture. It doesn't feel sticky um, at all. It absorbs really nicely into the skin and it also contains vitamin B5, um, which is panthenol, which is also a really great nourishing ingredient. Um, it, it is slightly fragranced. So for those of you that are sensitive to fragrance, um, probably not the right one for you. But as you can see, like it just leaves my skin feeling really nice and moist still, um, but not sticky at all. So um, out of the five I tried, this was my personal favorite one. The one containing a lot of hyaluronic acid, which is no surprise because that works really well for my skin type. Um, but yes, this is a really good one at preventing water loss from your skin. So it, it does say you can use this on face and body, but I probably would personally only use it for the face. Um, I probably use a, a thicker cream for my body. Um, but yes, this is that one. So next up is one for those with oilier skin types looking to create a matte finish and less shine. This is the 5 Alpha Control No Sebum Sun Lotion. Um, this one you have to shake. Um, it, it kind of reminds me of the Misha Waterproof Sun Milk. Um, it's got a very similar texture as well and even the kind of um, applicator is very similar. So as you can see it is a very runny texture similar to a sun milk or if you're familiar with um, a lot of the Japanese sun creams kind of reminds me a little bit of that um, but yes as you can see leaves a matte finish um, this one also contains powder vitamin E which um, like I mentioned before tocopherol is really good at um, getting rid of all of those other free radicals um, so if you have really oily skin type and looking to reduce the shine level and create a matte finish then this is the one for you um, this one uses zinc oxide so it is a physical sun cream um, for me it doesn't leave a white cast but i would have to test it on several different skin shades um, to know for certain, but I think compared to a lot of other physical sun creams that I've tried um, I have been really impressed with this one um, I probably would turn to this if I was in a very hot climate a very humid client client climate um, This would be a really great option or for those of you that just prefer a little bit more of a lightweight um, Consistency when it comes to their SPF then I think this one would be a really great option So next up is a hybrid SPF. This one is the pro balance biotics clear up sun um, This one describes itself as having a brightening effect and tone correcting um, So may not be for everyone for me I found that you have to really rub it in to reduce that white cast compared to other ones it is a hybrid so it does contain chemical filters as well um, but I do love the concept of this one obviously it contains various probiotics there's five probiotics included which include I'm reading it from the notes um, lactobacillus ferment lysate lactococcus ferment lysate bifida ferment filtrate bifida ferment lysate and saccharomyces ferment filtrate Whew. 
um, but this one is quadruple plus and SPF 50. Um, they do recommend that it can be used under makeup. I would have to test that out to be certain. Um, and it does contain zinc oxide, which they've pitched it as having a little bit more of a brightening effect to the skin. Um, but yeah, for those of you, this, this one actually feels more of a physical sun cream than this one. Um, so as you can see, it's definitely thicker in consistency and just acts a little bit more like your typical physical sunblock. Um, as you can see, like I said, it just takes a little bit of a longer time to rub in. That said, when I do, it doesn't really leave a white cast. Um, so yeah, if, if you are looking to, I guess, brighten your complexion and have, um, safe, physical and chemical coverage, then this would be a really good one. So the final product I'm talking about is the Vegan Kombucha Tea BB Cream. This is SPF 30 Double Plus, so compared to the other four that I've spoken about, contains less protection against harmful UV rays. This is from their Vegan Certified Kombucha line. Um, so it obviously contains kombucha, but also other fermented ingredients, and also Camellia sinensis water. Um, it is quite heavily fragranced. Um, I, I, to me, it's more of a makeup product. It's very runny in consistency, which I do love. Um, they do say that this one shade can be applied to every skin type. Personally, I probably don't think that it can, um, but it feels really lovely on the skin. I mean, it's got that kind of nice blurring effect, which I love from BB creams. Um, I will try and include a clip of me trying some on. Actually, I can probably just like try on a little bit here um, on my skin to see. Um, it does kind of die down. I think it probably looks like it doesn't fit my skin tone very well there, but I think as you leave it on the skin, it probably should be okay. Um, I'm not sure if that looks a little bit weird. My cheeks are very red though, because I did just work out before this, so yeah. Um, personally, I really like it. I wouldn't use it um, as my only SPF protection. I would probably apply SPF and then use this one on top. That was actually one of the questions that I received on Instagram when I put up the Q&A, um, but I'll go into that in a little bit more detail after this. But yes, this is the Kombucha BB, which as far as BB creams go, I really love, but I would not use it solely as my own only SPF protection. So that has been my introduction to SPF, answering some of your questions and reviewing and demoing the new range of Dr. Curicle sun creams. I'm sorry this is a really long video. If it was helpful, I would love it if you let me know in the comments. Please make sure you're subscribed and give this video a like. Let me know in the comments as well, like which of the five SPFs you'd be interested in. And if you think that we should get these Dr. Curicle sun creams and increase our SPF range on Beauty and Soul. But yes, I hope everyone is keeping well and I will see you in the next video. Bye.